Well, it's time for Talking Pints. I can't think of anybody better to sit here in Southampton and do Talking Pints with other than Le God. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Talking Pints. Cheers, Nigel. 443 games for Southampton. That was only in the league. Yep. It was 540 altogether. Was it? Just saying. Sorry, I've done... <laughs> I apologise for doing you down. Well, that's FA Cups and all the other Absolutely. things. Absolutely. So your whole career, never thought, never felt like leaving, never tempted to go anywhere else? Um, I, I was close. I, I was, when I was 21 and very young and impressionable, um, Spurs tried to buy me and I was very close to joining Spurs. Um, that was a team that I supported as a boy. Uh, so it was a, a bit of a temptation. Um, but in the end, uh, I came to my senses uh, and uh, I decided it was the right thing for me to do to stay at Southampton. And um, I, with my hand on my heart, I don't, I don't have a single regret about spending my whole career at Southampton Football Club. Not a single regret. You. Well, you know what? In an age when people appear to be more motivated by money than loyalty, I think that's rather admirable. Now, interestingly, of the 48 penalties that you took mm. for the club, 47 of them went into the back of the net. They did. Now, as somebody who was in the stadium at Wembley last year for the final of, your, of the Euros, <laughs> and having watched the agonies we've been through in Euro 96, World Cup 1990, you may be 54, but you're looking pretty fit to me. <laughs> Should you be on the list to take penalties in the World Cup coming up next week? I, I, would, I would quite happily take a penalty still at my age. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really enjoyed the... The pressure of those situations um, so so I really looked forward to taking penalties and I think that's one of the biggest things you can have as a penalty taker is your your mindset going into it has to be really positive um, uh, and, and I believe that was one of the biggest reasons why my penalty record was well it's good. a fantastic record I say England do need you so please well the, I mean I have uh, on occasions in the past I, uh, approaching World Cups and uh, European Championships and stuff the subject has come up and I have I have offered my services to uh, to go and coach um, the players, right. if, they want, well, if they want some advice on taking penalties. Mr Southgate, are you listening? Well, to be fair, I mean, there were probably other managers that may have been more likely than the woke Mr Southgate. Uh, to ah. have, uh, Whoa! Gosh, I haven't even got him on to Gary Lineker yet. <laughs> Is it coming home? Uh, I, I, I suspect not. Um, <laughs> Uh, as much as I, I would love England to win the World Cup, uh, I think it, with my realistic hat on, I think there are perhaps better teams than us. However, you um, we, we, you never know. Football's a funny game. There's some funny results that yeah, happen. Well, we'll cross our fingers, as, Absolutely. We, always, as we always do. Absolutely. Um, and tomorrow night, we've got Sir Jeff Hurst on the programme. He's going to be joining me Amazing. in Wembley, just outside the Wembley Stadium. Anyone that still wants to come along, uh, please go to gbnews.uk. Now, Matt, one of the things I like about you is that in my life I've been sacked many, many times. <laughs> and you were, of course, sacked by Sky News for having opinions that did not Sky conform. Sports, not, not Sky I, News. I apologise, Sky Sports. Your opinions did not conform. You were doubtful about lockdowns. Uh, I think doubtful is, a, is quite, quite a moderate way of describing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think there were a lot of people uh, two and a half years ago who were sounding the alarms of what we are now going through in terms of inflation and, and the state of the economy and, and the state of the waiting lists at the NHS. And there were a lot of people talking about that when we first decided to lock down. And those people uh, were ignored. They were censored. They were ridiculed. They were mocked as granny killers. Uh, and right now, we are living through, in this country, what everyone... Well, what those sensible people were predicting what would happen. See, what I would like to know is... We had a pandemic plan in place in this country. That plan was thrown out of the window, completely ignored, and in favour of what China were doing. And not one single person has ever mentioned that in our government. Not one of them has explained to us why we threw away a plan that was already in place and, and the, G, uh, the Great Barrington Declaration was kind of pretty much what it was about. Yep. Um, they knew very early on that the, uh, the main people that were affected by it, they knew the demographic of people that were going to be affected by it. So you would protect those kind of people uh, and you let the rest of the economy carry on as normal. Um, because I think we've seen uh, from what's happened in other countries uh, that if you, if you were a country that didn't lock down, everyone didn't die like everyone was predicted. 
Neil Ferguson's predictions were one of the most scandalous things yeah. I've ever seen in this country. Well, there's some real passion there. There's some real passion there, Is real it? belief. I, I, but, but, I'm, I'm a bit but, angry still, to be honest. I'm well, a bit angry it. because, no, I, because I think, as a, as a government, I think we were, we were let down very badly uh, by people. One of, the, one of my most annoying things now is to watch Rishi Sunak, and I know he went to the Dell and liked watching me play. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Um, <laughs> one, of my, one of the most annoying things I've seen since he's become Prime Minister, he has failed to... Uh, he's just failed to take any blame at all for the position we're in now when he was the Chancellor that was making these decisions <laughs> and giving everyone free money. So, Matt, now you're... Now you're a blogger, a broadcaster. What are you doing? <laughs> so, yes, I've, uh, I've found a new career. Uh, so um, uh, I think everybody in the room needs to download the Getter app and, uh, and start following me on there. I'm doing some fascinating live streams every Monday night at 8 o'clock um, called The Flip Side, where I interview people. And it was mostly the people that have been silenced uh, and the, the people that were ridiculed. Um, and that's why I called it The Flip Side, because I believe in this country we should be able to have free and open debate and both sides of the argument should be heard. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And we haven't had that. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I agree with that entirely. Final quick thought. When are you standing for Parliament? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, you've um, got to get in the I, 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 mean, I have to be honest you, with you. you. You believe in this so strongly. I, I, I believe in that strongly. What I, what I don't believe in, uh, and I think uh, a lot of people, um, especially the gentleman who was so eloquent earlier on, yep. uh, who suggested that um, at the moment that you can't tell the difference between the two main parties. Yep. Uh, and and I, I heard it described recently as being the, the two cheeks of the same backside. Uh, and I think that's... <laughs> Uh, I think the system in our country is not uh, a very fair one. No. Um, uh, and I think that to try and go into that system at the moment would not, uh, right. would not suit me at all.